Hello and welcome to the walkthrough for Surfboard here with Calabunga Studios. I'm Dylan, uh, founder of the company, and the few things that I want to walk through first before we get to the run through of Surfboard is kind of why we've created it and really some of the bigger uh, problems that we see across the industry. So some of the biggest challenges that we see are really hiring great people. Um, we've seen companies try a variety of different solutions, whether that's creating their own Revit templates, which definitely helps and you're still gonna need those Revit templates. It's also that the solutions uh, that you come up with, you know, we're gonna help you really emphasize that and be able to spend more time on your own Revit uh, solutions. And really the benefits uh, that we're gonna look at is really speed, efficiency, and time back, um, as well as greater profitability, which we'll cover at the end. So the top five problems that we solve here at Cowabunga Studios is really helping, or one of the big issues in the industry is uh, finding quality engineers. That's a huge problem across the industry, finding quality candidates. And we're gonna help you really be able to do that and to help keep the staff that you currently have. So finding those quality engineers and keeping the staff that you currently have. The other one is the economy's impact on the industry. In construction, we have our ups and our downs. And currently, so here in uh, December of 2019, the economy's impact is pretty strong. We have a lot of construction projects going on, which is great, uh, which also means that we're super busy and uh, can really be overwhelmed with projects. So we're gonna help you out with that. And then in keeping current, we want you to keep up with the most current technologies. And what that means is you're gonna need some time to do that. That goes uh, the same with the emerging technology piece over here is that we want you to keep current uh, with technology. Some of the keeping current also means with codes and just software in general. Um, so we wanna give you the time back to do that and as well as you know, develop, going with emerging technologies. So VR, AR um, has been a big one in the past years um, and then whatever might be on the horizon. But to give you that time to be able to explore some of this emerging technology and see what works for you and your company. And then the big one, um, over budget is a big problem we see across the industry basically not getting projects done in a timely fashion or it takes longer than we think or there's more changes and we're not always getting paid for them. So we wanna be able to address that. And that's really the biggest thing with Surfboard. So we're gonna go over here to our demo. So we're gonna flip here to Revit. And in Revit, um, this is a blank uh, 40,000 square foot building. There's really nothing inside of it. I've got a few panels, but uh, no other electrical devices, no lights, no outlets, nothing within this model. Uh, here's a ceiling plan, open a couple floor plans. As you can see, there's nothing really inside the model. So this is Surfboard. This is our add-in from Calabunga Studios. I'm Dylan. So for each of these lights, receptacles, and switches, you're gonna have a default menu that'll basically preload all your families and types and some other settings. Um, we can select all the rooms that we want here, which we'll do. And we're gonna just do lighting first and then go to receptacles, then to switches. We're gonna, I've already preloaded basically a fixture. So the first time that you'll do this, you'll go and load a um, fixture type. You can pick whatever type of uh, fixture that you want from that family. So you're gonna have the, the main family, then the type, um, and then put in some characteristics here, like lumens, foot candles, work plane. Um, and then you'll go to the cut sheet on the fixture and find these coefficient of utilization values. Um, they're pretty straightforward to find. They're usually the third or fourth sheet. And you'll input these values uh, into the software. And then everything will load. See, this was blank before. Now we can load it. And if we had, you know, different coefficient of utilization values, say we picked a different fixture, we can input them here in the update for this room type. So we'll, uh, for the corridor, we'll pick a different fixture and let's just say 20 foot candles. And the same with, let's say the lobby and the vestibule. Oh, that one will be selected and the vestibule. Go here. Uh, 
again, it's reading those lumen values so you can see the updates there. So pretty straightforward and it's pulling in every single room type. So every unique room name will have its own line. As you can see, like cafeteria is spelled goofy here. Um, so it's on its own line. So if you had Bob's office, Joe's office, Sally's office, uh, those would be three individual lines instead of just office to give you an idea. So it's pulling every single room name, unique room name and combining them into a list here. So we'll flip over to receptacles Go ahead and do our default standard one fixture per room, select everything. And then we're going to look at our instruction room here and we're gonna still put in our standard one and we're gonna do perimeter spacing. So while this is an office, um, we'll still give you a good idea of if you're doing multifamily projects that you can use this for uh, those multifamilies to get the required interval spacing that you need within your project. So we'll go down here um, for the restrooms and we'll choose another type of placement, one six inches from the door and we'll select a GFCI fixture or receptacle. And then we'll not put anything in the stairs and toilet. We'll also do this same for the women's one six inches from the door. So make sure we've got everything correct. And then every other instance will get one um, receptacle put on every single wall. Pretty straightforward. So those are the three selections, you know, one, one per each wall, uh, one six inches from the door or quantity per wall. So you can do one, two, whatever per wall. Um, it's one six inches from the door or the perimeter spacing that we're selecting. So the next is switches. Um, we'll just, this only has one type. So we'll just, again, select the switch, select everything. And then we'll make sure to unselect the corridor, the lobby and the vestibule. And then we'll go ahead and run all. So it'll take a minute or so to go through that. And while that's working, I want to work, walk through this kind of return on investment spreadsheet with you. So this is a 40,000 square foot building, say it's $250 a square foot, so it's a $10 million project cost. So when you look at design fees, let's say it's a 5% total design fee that includes architects, engineers, everybody. And then of that 5% total, let's say the electrical uh, team gets 10% of that overall 5% fee. So we get point, half a percent of the project, which equates to $50,000 let's say that the average electrical hourly billable rate is $100, meaning that it comes down to 500 hours for this project would be the budget. Now, when we break it down to SD, DD, CD, CA, um, oh, and we're a minute here, so we can see that uh, 460 fixtures have been put in, 396 receptacles and 96 light switches. So pretty, pretty awesome. We'll walk through this real quick here, show you, you know, there might be a few rooms that aren't populated, but again, by and large, everything has been populated. Here's, you know, our lights throughout. Um, so you can see our, our lights. These are our instruction rooms where we're getting our, our spacing. So pretty cool there, lights. We did 20 foot candles in the corridor and lobby. So you can see that layout. We'll cut a section here and go view our section. <clears throat> As you can see, all the light fixtures are mounted to the ceiling. These are the corridor lights you can see mounted to the, the structure. So if we go back here, we can see, see those if we're in here so that's what we can see we go down to our entry level so here's our uh, one of our instruction rooms and let's look at the receptacle spacing so six feet ten feet and then this is all glass so it's not gonna populate anything on the glass and then we look here ten feet And feet between those as well. Neat. 
So here's all the, give you all the distances. <laughs> so there we are. There's all the, the distances around the room. Oops, this this one. So there's our 10 foot spacings. Six feet from the door. So there's our receptacle spacing in all the other rooms. So like here's a non-instruction room, you know, one per wall and the corridors, one per wall. So every unique wall has got an outlet on it, uh, which can work out pretty well. So here's some of the other rooms. Here's a restroom, there's our GFCI. Here is our other two restrooms right here. So switch, GFCI receptacle, switches by each door. And then we'll go, so here's our second floor. So the light fixtures, when we look at them, so these are evenly spaced, right? They're, they're evenly spaced in the room. And they've got, there's 16 on center. So I can find the actual end to, um, I might not have pulled the right one, but you can see five, 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 six. So these fixtures are, you know, dead center within the room. So whether the, you as the electrical engineer move the lights or the architect snaps the grid to the light fixtures. Um, it's kind of up to you on how that, <laughs> that workflow goes, um, but the lights are, you know, dead center within the room. So it gives you some good, you know, and they've, all the calculations have been done in the background to make sure that, you know, the proper foot candle has been established with the criteria given. So um, pretty awesome that it's, you know, populating those through the rooms. Again, there's going to be some cleanup. Uh, we're not saying that it's totally perfect, but it does give you, you know, a very, very, very good start um, to this. So let's, we'll hop back over to our ROI piece. And again, 500 lights and it took, you know, all of a minute. So let's go back over here. So we broke down our schematic design, design development, construction documents, and CA. And, you know, you can always manipulate this to whatever you would like. Um, but I basically did, so really surfboard, so the add-in that we just viewed, is really geared to getting you through design documents. What that means is, you know, 35 basically percent of the project, you might say 40, however you want to cut the numbers is totally up to you. So looking at that, you know, SD and DD numbers, we get to 175 hours is what is typically budgeted. And uh, as we all know, <laughs> rarely do we, we hit those numbers. So um, now let's say it takes 17 and a half hours basically to clean up uh, and manually prepare design documents. This might be a few meetings, you know, inputting everything into surfboard, doing a little bit of cleanup, adding some things here and there, putting the drawing set together, what have you. So let's just say that it, it takes 10%, which is really what this is, 10% of um, that 175 hours. So you're saving 157 hours uh, with surfboard. And surfboard, this is for a full year. So this $10,000 is, um, so this is surfboard investment for one year. And really on this one project, you can see that you're saving $5,700, you know, even after you pay for surfboard for the year. So this doesn't include any of the other projects that you're doing, any of the other projects that you undertake. Um, you know, this savings really is just on project one. So really it's a 12% um, project savings and you have a 58% return on investment on project one. Um, and then if we look at, you know, let's say that you're doing more and more projects and you don't need to end up hiring that additional designer at really, so their salary is 75,000 and then you add on benefits and everything else. 1.3 is a typical multiplier, which is how we get 97.5. So for that, you know, $10,000, you're, you're saving this on top of, you know, any of the time savings. Um, so that's, that's really surfboard in a nutshell, you know, you've, basically laid out a building very, very, very quickly. Um, done some perimeter spacing if you wanted or one outlet per wall or some GFCIs and some rooms. Um, you can switch those types, you know, adding switches to the doors um, or next doors, things like that. And again, you can add different types of switches um, 
throughout the model. So again, very, very, very straightforward, very simple. If you can use Excel, you can use this. So again, we're helping you to basically save time and not be over budget. We're helping you stay current again by giving you more time, being able to train more engineers. Um, and then you can take your time to find quality engineers. And then whether the economy is up or down, currently it's up. That means there's a lot of projects to do. This will help get you through those projects. So we did the demo. And now four steps to acquiring surfboard. So if you'd like, we can still go through a demo personally with you and your team, answer any question that you have and show it to you again in real time. Another, the next step would be to sign an agreement. Pretty straightforward, figure out how many licenses you need and anything like that. So go through our agreement and then we'll do the software implementation. So I'll work with your IT team or whoever is doing software implementation with you and your team uh, to sign licenses, all that great stuff. Pretty simple, straightforward, uh, won't take that long to go through. And then training and onboarding. And this can be done either virtually or in person. We're very open to either um, aspect. So whatever you would prefer for you and your team. So there is some fee in regards to in-person training, um, depending on how many licenses you get, but we can work that piece out. Uh, virtual training will always be free. So this is the four simple steps to getting surfboard. And really, I hope that you enjoyed this presentation, this walkthrough of surfboard um, and seeing you know this massive savings. If you're doing, let's go through real quick. We'll just do this real fast. Let's say that you do a million, oops, that's a hundred thousand. Let's say that you do a million square feet a year. So this is a full year and one license of surfboard. So let's say you're doing 250 million in construction costs a year as a firm. So your electrical team is bringing in 1.25 million in fee. Um, so 12,000 hours. Uh, so really you've got probably six people working for you to get through this, maybe five and they're working just some overtime <laughs> to make that happen. So we're looking at, you know, 4,300 hours is what it takes to get through design documents, SDDD. Um, 400 hours would be what you would do to manually prepare that. So we'd save you basically 4,000 hours. So two people is what this amounts to um, every year for a $10,000 investment. Um, so, I mean, the, the returns end up being crazy. So with, uh, with this, you're gonna save you know, close to 400,000 plus if you didn't need to hire two additional people, it's another 200 grand basically. Um, so if we, you know, 97 times two, that's like 195, you know, plus this, I mean that you're starting to get, you know, a half million dollar savings on a $10,000 investment. Um, one could say that we're not charging enough for surfboard, uh, again, I think it's a fair value definitely um, for this type of, of savings. So again, this surfboard, we'll do a demo for you or you can just, again, watch this walkthrough. We'll sign an agreement. We'll do some software implementation, uh, really just assigning licenses to you and your team, get it installed, all that great stuff, and then some training and onboarding. And then really it's off to you saving a ton of money as we can see here. That's really our goal. So thank you for watching this walkthrough of Surfboard. I am Dylan Mitchell and thank you for watching.